evening and welcome to the Shadow Trader Video Weekly for Sunday, June 28th, 2015. Market is definitely stuck inside of a, a range of sorts here, so there's not too much predictive power here, I don't think, for anyone. Notice that if I draw the line here in between the, uh, through the channel, we are very, very close to the middle of that channel. So you've got relatively good odds that you see this, and you've also got relatively good odds that you see that. Now, what would favor one scenario over the other? Um, the only thing I can really see here that would probably favor the downside more than the upside is the fact that you have high here, higher high, and then clearly lower high, and especially clearly lower high after you came down here, reloaded, bounce, retest off the same area, and then you really ran hard, and then you stalled out, and you were not able to make it up to this, uh, you know, the trend line resistance or to make an equal or higher high. So coming off of a lower high could be some disappointed bulls here. Uh, if so, that would take us to the 2080 area. This is going to be my key area for the coming week. I'm going to be watching 2080 here. And then also these lows here. Now, I mentioned this on the Tasty Trade program uh, earlier in the week. I was saying that people should note that the more times that a trend line touches, the more points you have along its path, obviously the odds are greater that you then break through it at some point. So you got these two points here anchoring it, and then you've got one touch here, second one after the anchor, third touch. This would be the fourth. Would it break right away in a straight line manner from here? I don't think so. Uh, you know, you'd probably have a bounce again, but if you have any lower high bounce, then that's probably, uh, you know, shortable in that area and you, you would eventually uh, break down through. So we'll have to see if that's the scenario that happens. But if we start to get some momentum here around the trend line, that is the uh, scenario that I, I would probably be looking for. Um, overall, and I, I, I believe I did mention this last week, again, moving averages just extremely sideways here. Notice that the 20 and the 50 are just very, very tight. Uh, I talked last week about how when a market is, is away from the moving averages, such as here, you have uh, a lot more momentum going on, right, when the moving averages are, are actually going in some direction. But when they're sideways and they're kind of coiled up next to each other, as you see here, that's the that's kind of the, uh, the the proof that you just don't have any sort of trend. You can see how they keep kind of, and when they're just kind of coiling around each other like this, you see here in these areas, and they keep crossing each other, obviously you have very, very little trend. So that this is the situation that the market's uh, been in for a little while now. There's a lot of, uh, not a lot, I would say some divergence going on in the other majors. Uh, just it's always a good, good idea to keep an eye on the difference in the charts. I talk about this pretty much every week because it is important. You have NASDAQ Composite breaking out to a new all-time high, and then it failed back in the range. The, uh, the NDX failed to make a, a new high, actually made it just a slightly higher swing high here, but not as high as here, and then fell back in the range. And the, the Russell was also very strong and has just kind of fallen back. I think the rut, m much like most of the averages here, has a little bit of room to go uh, to the downside uh, before it touches its, uh, its trend line support, all right? Now, fundamentally, one of the reasons why this market is probably jittery or just sideways or has a lot of liquidation breaks and then short covering rallies, et cetera, is because we do have the big grease deadline at the end of the month. We'll see how that plays out. There has been news upon news upon news coming out for the entire last few weeks, I would say, pretty much all of June. Um, saying it's resolved, it's not resolved. The market seems to be very sensitive to that. I, at this point, don't even know how much effect this is actually going to have on the market if it's resolved or it's not resolved. Obviously, there's threat of contagion of some of these other uh, Eurozone countries uh, leaving the Euro or bailing out or uh, you know, defaulting on their debts as well if Greece sort of sets a precedent for that. But I have no way of knowing these things. Just be aware that there is a deadline June 30th. Uh, if history repeats itself, as it usually does, expect that they kick the can down the road and then we'll have to see if the markets rally, which I'm going to guess that they will. Then it's a question of how far do they go? Are we able to make new highs once again or not? We shall see. So all about Greece um, on Tuesday, which is uh, June 30th, is that uh, deadline. All right, let's take a quick look at uh, market profile while we have it here. Not too much to report on the profile front this week. I don't want to get too deep into it. Last week, uh, I gave you a little bit more detailed analysis. Um, just be aware that we are 
one time framing to the downside now, so you have a low, lower low, lower low, right? Um, that's called one time framing, but at the same time, you do not have any sort of value breaking away lower. You had breakaway value here. Breakaway means here that you had the market in balance. Then it broke away to the downside. The value areas are not overlapping at all. You see how they're separated. But look what happened on Thursday and Friday, right? This one is overlapping with this one here. And this one is overlapping with this one here. So that is simply a, a sign of a market that is not really selling off hard, not moving hard in that particular direction. So be aware of that. Uh, all right. Um, the taper was very clean on Friday. If you were trading ES and looking to make a buy at the low of the day, uh, Brad and I were discussing on Tasty Trade that there was actually some Greek headlines that came out like right in here and like pushed the market higher. But regardless, news or no news, it always seems to work out the same. Look at the beautiful taper here. It's what I always talk about. There it is. I'll make it nice and big for you guys so you can see. Here's the taper. 9966321. And of course, as always, when you see this, it's 9 times out of 10, probably 99 out of 100, that's the low tick of the day when you see that. So that's the value of market profile software right here. This is the one of the most valuable things about this whole thing. When you see that number, tiny, double digits, that's the low of the day. You know, you pretty much know it and you can go about your business and buy the ES or sell your puts down there, whatever bullish type of scenario you wanted to, uh, to do. Uh, point of control on Friday is also relatively prominent. Uh, when the market is moving harder in one direction with more momentum, the point of control will be less prominent. So for instance, you have Wednesday here, boom. Notice that the point of control is not very prominent, only six TPOs wide, same thing here. About seven TPOs wide, the market's moving harder in one direction. When you have more of a balancing day, in essence, like you had on Friday, you get a very wide point of control. So just keep that uh, in mind, all right? Um, two levels that I'm gonna be watching, um, closely, uh, I would say in, in, the, uh, in the coming week. Um, you notice that your close right here, which is the red box at 96, the two levels that I'm talking about is right here. There was a double bottom low from last week. And notice that price stopped short of it here, then broke through it here. But then in Friday's session, it traded on both sides of it. So I thought that was kind of interesting. So Really, acceptance need, you know, there was some acceptance below this, this double bottom low here, but you know, by all intents and purposes, I mean, we traded on both sides of it. Yeah, you got some acceptance below, but no real follow through to it. So early next week, watch to see if, if this level here in the S&Ps, it's around 97, if you have acceptance either above or below it, right? If you can, can spend some time and spend some volume uh, above it or below it, uh, that could be a tell. Okay, let's get back into the charts for a second. Since I don't really have any specific trade ideas for you in this week, I thought I'd just leave you with kind of a little educational tip, uh, which is directly from my personal experience and, and, and specifically on Friday, from, from some personal experience on Friday. And when I say experience, I mean like even specifically uh, a couple of things that happened uh, to me on Friday and uh, one was in uh, Netflix and one was in Monsanto and so for instance when you see a stock that's coming down to a 20 period moving average like this you see this green line it's almost always a buy for a day trade and sometimes it can be even for a longer term trade and Netflix actually bounced there it was only a couple of bucks but if, if you can imagine like right in here where it came down to whatever that price is of that of that 20 MA you can see the stock lifted and then like fell back down. So there were a couple of dollars to be made, but it didn't really do much. Um, the lesson here is that this type of trade should always work perfectly, or if it's gonna work, it should perf work perfectly. And if it doesn't, you need to just bail and understand that it's probably going lower. Like for instance, so that's, that's off, of the, off of a 20 MA. Uh, another trade was Monsanto, which if you notice here, there's strong support here at a prior low of exactly uh, 105.76. At some point during the day on Friday, um, as we were coming into here, 
it was actually right in here. You notice we broke down through that, I believe, right? What's the low here? Yeah, 105.55. I was actually long this stock at 105.60 because I figured we broke a couple cents below the level and then we rallied back, made a little reversal bar. You can see it here. And we should go, right? But we didn't. So no big deal. I mean, I had great trade location. I was like down in here at 60 and ended up losing like, say, 10 cents on the trade. The point is, is that if you're going to be in with good trade location, all right, there is no hoping. There's no, there, see this stuff right here? This is not like just, oh, well, maybe it's doing dangling stuff or whatever. This is not how technical analysis works. You, a worst case scenario, if you're going to retest the level, you will, you will just retest it once. You'll, you'll maybe come down into it, right? And then you'll, you'll come up, you'll retest it, but then you'll go. You should not ever break down below it like that and then go, especially not the second time once you've tested. All right, so just keep that in mind. If you're going to take trades off of inflection points, be they longer term support or resistance or 20 period moving averages, it's a very right or right out type of trade. So it's a good trade to take. You have excellent risk reward. You have asymmetric opportunity, but don't ever play the hope card. Right. If it if it starts turning around on you right away, just you know you have really good chance to move that stop up to um, break even or better or have a really really tight stop. And uh, as we were discussing on the Tasty Trade Show on Friday, when you have an opportunity like this and you know you're in right on that line, and that's the beauty of trading support and resistance or trading like a 20 period moving average or something. It's a very specific point. You know exactly the value of that 20 period moving average. For instance, right here you can see it on your screen. It's 112.95. It's right there. So you know if you're in the stock right at say 113 even, all right, it should not break that level by very much. All right? You look at as we were just looking on this uh, this chart here on the support and resistance. You know specifically that that low is 105.76. So in this case, the stock went to like just 105.50ish, 55 or whatever. It broke back through. If I come through a support of 105.76, correct? And I go to a low of, which was at the time, 105.55, right, down in here. This is the 105.55 low, breaching it, okay? And then I see that the stock rallies back up a little. So I know that the stock is getting some support at that moment for a reason, because it's coming to that point. So if you are long anywhere in here, all right, you do not need to have a stop any lower than that bar. That's it. This is the reason that the stock is bouncing. It's not a guessing game at all. Technical analysis is very specific and stocks can and do bounce off of prior lows or other levels literally to the penny all the time. Now obviously when you have a stock like Monsanto, it's $105 a share, you have Google $600 a share, whatever, it is not going to be to the penny. You have to adjust it for whatever the price of the stock is. But, you know, Let's say it's Priceline, it's $1,200 a share. You see it coming down. It comes within a dollar, let's say. All of a sudden, you see things start to turn around. That was probably it. That was probably your low. So you could literally stop under that low. All right. So just a, just a little teaching point in how to play this stuff. It just came to my mind because on Friday, I had two specific examples of it where uh, I was able to make a little bit of money on that Netflix before it rolled over. But on the Monsanto, it was just a, a stop out you know, very, very quickly because it... Uh, you know, it did go up a few cents here, but then just kind of uh, died on the vine and became a damp squib really quickly. So, all right. That's all I've got for this week. On behalf of myself and the entire Shadow Trader team here in beautiful Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, I wish you good trading and good night.